Hello. Today I thought that I would print one of my uh, little lino cuts and just do a bit of loose inking and painting with the rollers and just show you how you can fool around with the print. So I'm going to start with the sky and I'm going to work on this top part of this block here and not worry about this, this bottom part to start with. So um, I'm working with water-based ink and I'm going to begin by putting in a layer of flat blue to start with. So quite a conventional beginning. So I'm just going to roll up on that flat blue. And although I've got lino down here, I'm not going to print on it because I don't want to bother getting any blue on that area. So I'm just working my way over that, taking my time, make sure it's nice and clear. And the paper that I'm playing with today is the, now I'm not sure how you pronounce this, and I'm sure the Awagami factory can put me right, but I think it's Shiranime um, paper and it's from their tester edition pack and it's 110 grams so it's a washi paper and I'm just going to take my first impression and I'm using a bamboo baron here to take the impression. So I'll just check and see if that's printed all right. Yep, that's absolutely fine. So I've got my first layer of colour. And now I'm going to put a little bit of a sort of glow at the top of the sky with a slightly darker blue. So what I might do actually is get my darker blue and fetch it over here. I don't want it too dark. And then I'm going to just start working it. So I quite like that it's not too smooth. In other videos I'll show you how to make a nice smooth rainbow roll bleed of colour but I quite like the idea that it's, it's not too smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like pull it out a little bit here and lay down some texture and I'm just dabbing with the roller. I'm not even putting the whole roller down. I'm just dabbing and I'm putting a completely uneven layer of blue there. So it's really sort of very loose and painterly and but I don't want to get it too much on that detail there because it's going to get a bit too much. So I'm just going to wipe away where that ink has gone on the lines because I don't want the lines to be obscured. So I'm just that and let's pop that back in. And I'm just going to put a very gentle pressure over that and check. Yeah, that's fine. I don't I'll put a little bit more pressure at the top. Good. So now what I've got is a little bit of extra texture in that sky, and I'm going to then move on to a different block. Now what I can do is come back and put some white in um, at a later moment in the printing. So I might well do that just to show you over printing with white using a water-based ink, um, which is always a very subtle thing but it, it can be quite nice but we need to let the sky dry out before I even try and do that so we'll leave that for now. So now I'm going to move on to my next bit of the print and this backfield here. Let's just get these bits out of the way. So I'll put this up here. I would hate for you to get the impression that I don't keep things tidy when I'm printing myself, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're a bit push for space so I'm just going to come over here and lay down some green. Now 
Now this back field has got some texture to print over it. Another block that's going to print some texture on it. So I think this I'm going to keep reasonably flat and simple. And again, I'm not printing this bit down here because I'm going to put that on a different layer. So I'm just going to check that I haven't got any ink where I don't want it. I'm going to little wipe down here just to make sure that I get rid of any bits that I don't want. And I'm not putting much pressure on here. This paper is very sensitive and it's, it doesn't take much pressure to get a nice print. Now because of the blue in my sky being under that green of the tree, can you see it's actually putting some texture into that tree which I quite like. And now I'm going to go on to a different block. So I'm going to go on to kind of the middle block, the, the bigger block. And to get rid of there, I'm going to mix myself a sort of middle, middle green here. So these are water-based inks, as I say. These are Lucas inks that I'm using that I would use to teach. Um, and I'm using them because I already have colours mixed up in them. So that gives me a bit of a free hand. And I'm going to use the same roller because I don't want the, the ink to be too much darker or different from what I've just used. So I'm going to... Now I know that I'm going to want darker colours when it comes to the trees, but for now we'll put a layer of this colour on as well. So this is kind of my base layer here that I'm putting on. being very careful when I roll it back not to crease up the paper. So now I've got a very pale layer and I'm beginning to quite like what's happening here. I'm happy with this colour here but I think I want that a little bit darker and this certainly a little bit darker, so I'm going to come in with this darker green up here. And I want some darker here. And let's have a look. So you can see this is very kind of loose rose I'm working. I just want to have a, an even darker tone on it. So I resort to smaller rollers. And I want this darker green. doing this is not to press very hard, just let the ink 
drop off the roll almost. So you're not pressing hard with the roller, you're just letting the ink fall off the roller to start putting a nice texture on. Just making sure that I'm where I want it and I'm going to make it red. So I'm deliberately starting to build up texture here. I might just put more on the tree. So this is a really loose way of working and you won't get an identical addition this way, but it, it's fun and it's a sort of good way to learn your way around colours and inks and stuff um, and I do ink like this in my own work but not as loosely as this not quite as painterly as this so um, when I do it tends to be with Japanese woodblock and it tends to be one-off prints rather than editions of prints so this is not the way to make an edition of prints Now we're starting to get quite a nice interesting texture building but I think I want this foreground to be a brighter green and also now I've dropped in that darker green at the back there. So let's get that nice grassy green. So here I'm pressing a little bit harder, maybe, and I'll just remove that rot that I've spotted. That's better. Pressing a little bit harder, just to make sure that I'm getting a little bit more ink off. Don't press too hard. If you press too hard, it, it's self-defeating. It becomes very hard for the ink to leave the roller at all if you're mashing it. So I'm happy is always best. This sort of thing, um, when you start doing it, it takes a bit of nerve because it can look really weird um, until the print's finished because you're making a lot of textures and things and it can be hard to read what the print looks like. So don't despair if halfway through you think this is rubbish, it's not working, keep going. Um, I know from teaching that people often feel like they've made a mess when actually it's all going to come out all right. Nice, so now I've got quite a nice texture going on here, but I've got some empty bits here which don't look as good. There's a world of difference between an interesting texture and it just looking like you haven't inked well. So here, for example, I think that looks like I haven't inked very well. So I'm just going to pop A little bit more ink, I can just get that as it's on the other side. And what I'm also going to do is go back to my dark green and just pop in a few little bits. And just check that I've rubbed it all down. So this time I'm just going to work it a little bit with the spoon because the spoon's going to put spot pressure. So it, I just want to make sure that the edges are neat um, because the more chaotic you're inking, the sort of more crispy you need edges and things to be. Otherwise, it just looks like a mess. You know, if your edges are uh, are untidy and uneven and your registration is bad as well as all this textural inking, it just looks like you don't know what you're doing. So it's worth taking your time and just making sure that you have areas caught down. So I'm just checking that I've got any areas that I haven't 
Not that simple pattern there. Make it a little bit longer. Yeah, that's coming there. So now you can see I've got a, a much more cohesive ink in there. And now I'm going to put in another block to put some shadow in. So let's go over to there. So back to this one. And this time I'm going to deal with this bit down here. And I think I probably want this green mixed in with a bit more blue. So I'm just going to mix myself up a slightly darker mid-tone sort of green and ink up this area. Now I would never advocate um, printing a whole print all the way through without any drying in between layers. It's okay for the purposes of YouTube but it's not great. Um, you'll get a much better result if you ink up maybe a couple of layers maximum and let it dry. The print will stay crisper, you'll have less trouble with it, there'll be less danger of it sticking to itself and tearing on the, the lino, uh, sticking to the lino rather and tearing. It's much much better practice. It's a tribute to this uh, washi paper that it can take this wet on wet printing um, and there's another reason why I recommend it. So this is the Awagami Shiramini, Shiramini. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but it's a lovely paper um, and it, it can take quite a bashing. So let's go again. And this time I'm being careful about the pressure because it's a small detailed shape. There's less lino to impress and there's lots of sharp spiky edges. So I don't want to ram those through the paper by rubbing too hard. Again, come back and have a look. A little bit more detail, I think, would be good there. So maybe what I will do is let's have a look at the front. I'm just going to sort of make a rainbow rollish by mixing. So let's just do this properly. Again, I'm not really going for the sort of classic neat, tidy rainbow roll. I'm just dropping in a bit of a shade in there. So you can see I've just put a fairly subtle bit of a darker shade in there and one there so that you can see the, the path in the grass. And now I'm going to go and work with my other shading block. So this little bit here is going to drop a bit of shadow into the back. Now I have this block also. so. I might print that as well. So let me just add a little bit of shadow into the back. And I don't want to overdo it. So I'm printing the ink. What you can do instead of extender sometimes is just to use the ink very, very thin. I quite often do that um, where I don't want to use extender, where it's a, a sort of, especially where it's a very detailed bit of cutting because sometimes it's harder to ink up with extender. If you've got a lot of extender, it can be quite hard to get a really crisp, fine detail. So if I've got fine detail to ink up, what I'll do is I'll use ink rolled out so thin that it's almost like using extender, which is what I'm doing here. 
it's a very very thin layer giving me a little bit of a shadow shaping in the back there and I'm going to see when I've printed the dark shadow whether I need to adjust that I might change it a little bit by over inking it but for now let's leave it as is and go on to this shadow in the foreground so I'm going to take a little bit more of the dark It's getting a bit blue going away from what I want, so I might just put a little touch of red just to um, get rid of that. Tip it over a little bit into a, an even colour. That's fine. So I'm now starting to get some texture into the grass. You will get a much better result if the layers were dry, but hopefully this is going to show you anyway. Um, so I'm going to go back to the this final block, which I want to be nice and dark. So let me just mix myself a dark. Now, if I were working on my own work, I would never work on one print all the way through like this. This is purely to show you how um, free and easy you can be with inking up. If I were working on my own work, I would be printing each layer across several prints and then the next layer across several prints, not going one piece of paper and building up layer by layer. So this is an entirely artificial construct just for demonstrating to you. But nevertheless, it's a nice thing to show you. So now I'm going to get this little roller and just make sure that I get that frame linked up properly. Because if you're going to do lots of textural printing, you want some areas that are nice, crisp, flat colour Otherwise, it can all get a bit chaotic on the eye. So I'm just going to try and get a nice flat colour at the top here. Just when you're inking up like this, just take your time and don't put too much pressure down. Now I've just noticed there's a little tiny bit of grot stuck to the frame there, so let's just get that out. Never rush inking, it's, it is always better, slow and steady. Okay. 
so nice gentle even pressure over the detailed areas and you can afford to be a little bit tougher over the areas where there's more lino it's where you've got those spiky little details you need to be really careful so you don't damage them and now I'm just going to make sure that I've got my frame you can see this comes from this paper it comes from the Aragami sample pack um, and they very helpfully put a little sticker on the back with all the details but just need to try and get that little corner bit. I'm not happy with how that's looking, so let's just move this over. So really, that's better. I do want this frame to be nice and crisp. It's worth taking the trouble so that it contrasts with the rest. So I was going to go back and put some white in the sky, but I'm not going to because it's going to be a bit of a faff to try and fit it in on this one. But I will show you inking white over dark at some point during these films. So there is my very loosely printed um, landscape. Really happy with it. And I like these shadows here. What I don't like is there should be more detail in this area here, and that's to do with the ink printing wet on wet on wet. So, you know, there's nothing I could do about it for this demo, but if you're trying it, let the print dry between layers. The other thing that I quite like up in the tree here, it's very subtle, but because of that painterly band of darker blue in the sky, it's had a knock-on effect in the uh, leaves of the tree, so I kind of like that. So I would really encourage you to have a play and work on a print like this and just get a feel for dropping in some textures and things. It does push it into the realm of mono printing, but, you know, that's no bad thing. Um, and certainly if you're testing out papers, it's quite a fun way of um, trying them out. And I thoroughly recommend it. So I hope you'll join me again as we get near the end of the series now, but we've got a few more to come, so do join us.